demonstration, we're going to show you how to create tests for action chains and how they get uh, automatically executed. We have a, a little application where we fetch a country and we calculate the pop uh, population density. This is the action chain that does the work and we can create a test case for this action chain. When you create a test case, for example, let's test uh, the scenario of fetching the US information you can provide the values for some of the um, variables that are used, for example, the code for the country. And if you're calling any REST services, you need to provide a sample of what you expect to get. So over here, we're going to invoke our REST service and just copy the returned value. So let's put in US, call the REST service. This is the expected result. We're gonna copy this one and then go back into our action chain. And over here, we'll put this as an example body of what we would expect here from this REST call. Then we can click the get suggestions, which basically runs through the action chain and based on the values we provided, gives us what would be the result. So we can see here the results uh, of several variables and we can add those to our test case. Okay, so we're going to test for each one of those values, including the density calculation over here. So this is 73% of our code already covered. Let's also create another test case and um, to go through the other flow in a case where, uh, for example, the REST service fails. So again, we'll provide an invalid value, for example, for a country. We need to show what to expect when this REST service fails, so let's put in this invalid value, click and see the failed result, copy this over and go back to our REST definition. We'll set it to be failure in this case and put the result of the failure over here. Again, we can click the get suggestions to get the list of values that are going to be assigned to various variables. And we can add specific ones um, as we go through, or we can also click just add all, okay? uh, which might be faster in this case. So now we're at 93% coverage of our code. If we actually run all the tests, we can see both of the tests are now in the green. Over here, we have the test tab, which also shows us the status of our tests. So now let's go over and modify, uh, for example, our action chain and introduce a bug. So we're gonna make a, a very simple bug. Instead of dividing the population by the area, we're gonna multiply them. Okay. Save. Okay, so we introduced a bug. We didn't notice that we introduced a bug and we continue to work. We can potentially go to other pages or do other things. Now, whenever we're gonna um, leave the computer for a couple of seconds without activity, Visual Builder is going to run the tests automatically for us. It's gonna run specifically the tests on action chains that change. So I'm right now not doing anything and you can see the results show up. Hey, one of your tests failed. Okay, so this allows me to very quickly recognize when an error happens in my code. I can now go back to my test case. I can click the test that failed. I can see the problem area. Okay. And then I can go and fix this. So we'll switch to the diagram, click on the assign, and let's go over and fix the issue. So the faster that you get notified about errors, the more easily it is to recognize, hey, what was the change that I did that broke something? This is why it's so easy for me to go over here and fix this. Now I can go over to the test and I can manually run it now to test it. But just to show you again, if I don't run it right now, I can continue to work. And at some point when I'm gonna leave the Visual Builder without doing any activity in the designer, and let it rest for a couple of seconds. In the background, it's gonna run my test results um, and show them to me over here in the tab. And now I can see both tests have passed. So we're good.